Hi, welcome all of you and uh, I'm sure you people have started preparing for this uh, exam that is Cochin Shipyard exam. This is as I told you earlier also like uh, this is a good uh, prestigious opportunity for students especially of South India because uh, you know exam is in Kerala, Cochin so Keralaites must write it and uh, Tam Tamil students are from Tamil, Karnataka those who can go and write this exam must write it. And your PD is going ahead with the micro module and we are saying that majority questions are going to come from there. Now we do not have previous years papers for uh, coaching shipyard much reference. But yes, I could talk to some of the uh, people working and some of the executive engineers, uh, students, I could uh, uh, reach to some of them. And I am going to take two classes here, uh, today and tomorrow. Today's class is recorded and tomorrow I will be coming uh, uh, on a live class. Uh, covering entire 40 question you know there will be 40 technical question 40 question for mechanical engineering covering entire syllabus so uh, 40 questions 40 minutes that is the time we have and we are going to cover that in 40 minutes only you have some queries some questions so that uh, you can discuss with me uh, so i will be covering 40 questions uh, tomorrow live class so exact timings you will get soon now this uh, this cl this class is for uh, a couple of questions as i told you in uh, you know, coaching shipyard uh, questions are uh, asked from production and material science because that is what they do. I have collected questions of uh, production and material science, uh, which were on memory based only uh, from the students. That is uh, some question related to that, some question related to that. So this is uh, what on the basis of the memory only. Uh, I am going to cover what kind of questions uh, are asked. Let's go for it. Let's uh, practice it. Fractural rigidity is a measure of flexural rigidity is the measure of that is the first question just go through these answer choices and uh, tell me what do you think is the answer for that you know there are three kind of things here in uh, mechanical engineering strength of material if you go there are three things one is called axial rigidity one is called axial rigidity which is e into a e is the modulus of velocity a is the area of cross section then comes e into i right that is the you know flexural rigidity flexural rigidity and uh, that is in case of bending and then g into j g into j that is you know your uh, torsional rigidity torsional rigidity so this is somewhere is the measure of resistance to you know uh, bending or deformation or shearing something like that if i talk about axial rigidity you know modulus of velocity is stress over strain stress is nothing but load per unit area of cross section deformation per unit length so if i want to find out ea what ea is ea is nothing but load per unit deformation load per unit definition into length now, if I divide E A by L, if I do E A by L, E A by L, it comes out to be stiffness. You know, stiffness is nothing but load per unit deformation is called stiffness. So, there are different things, elasticity, stiffness and rigidity, right? Elasticity is a material property, area of cross section is geometric property, length is a geometric property. So, E is elasticity. E A axial rigidity, E I flexural rigidity and torsional rigidity something like that. So answer to this question is bending without fracture that is a measure flexural rigidity is the measure of this. Hope you understood this. Let us go to the next question now. Toughness is the measure of what? Toughness is the measure of what? Let me give you the diagram. This is the diagram of mild steel. You know this is the stress strain diagram. Remember that this side you measure ductility, you measure the malleability, these two things you measure and this side opposite to ductility is the brittleness, opposite to ductility is the brittleness, this side you measure the strength, y axis you measure the strength. Now the slope of stress strain diagram gives you modulus of elasticity. So measure of elasticity, rigidity, stiffness is actually the slope. Then you know what, if we go to the area, if we find out the area, then area under elastic curve gives me 
what you call resilience or modulus of resilience that is called modulus of resilience but if i take entire area up to fracture point if i take entire area up to fracture point that means this entire area if i consider that is a measure of modulus of toughness modulus of toughness now you understand the unit of anything on stress strain diagram the unit of uh, you know area area if i want to measure on stress strain diagram the unit is joule per millimeter cube joule per millimeter cube that is the unit of strain energy per unit volume now toughness is nothing but energy sort of unit dimensionally it is energy so you need to multiply by the volume and then you get toughness now if you see the question toughness is a measure of what you know toughness is area and area can only be calculated if you multiply stress with strain that means it is a measure of strength and ductility the material having good strength and good ductility is a said to be tough material can you give some example of tough material yes sir mild steel is a tough material can you give example of some ductile material copper or aluminum can you give some example of strong material maybe uh, cast iron is a strong material or you know high carbon steel is a uh, strong material strength axis is more so answer for this question is uh, strength and ductility this is the answer for this let's go forward which of the following displays relation sigma is equal to k times epsilon raised to power n where n is more than 1 if you ask me to draw a graph of stress strain where it is more than 1 i will be drawing it like this you know y proportional to x n where n is more than 1 you know this kind of graph you get so in this case n is more than 1 stress and strain diagram and this typical graph we get for rubber as you know that graph is for rubber <coughs> so this graph is for rubber any idea what kind of graph do you get for plastic yes for plastic you get this kind of graph so in the plastic initially it is difficult for you to deform but later on it flows rubber is on the other hand initially it is difficult initially it is very easy to deform and thereafter it is difficult to uh, deform it highest solid state solubility of carbon is found in which of the allotropes of iron you know iron has got couple of allotropes alpha gamma delta these are the allotropes of iron so highest carbon will be in what that is in austenite and that is uh, basically gamma iron in which you get maximum percentage of carbon in the so iron carbon diagram if you see iron carbon diagram you need to uh, see the iron carbon diagram in that different phases you will find maximum carbon solubility behavior is there in the gamma iron right so that is austenite this is called uh, austenite right so this is what iron carbon diagram is very important for coaching shipyard exam just prepare it well let's go next find incorrect incorrect statement related to annealing annealing is a heat treatment process this is the heat treatment process heat treatment process i want to tell you something about that normalizing is a heat treatment process you know annealing further is of couple of type including process annealing then there is a spheroidizing spheroidizing process then you know there is a tempering process so these are couple of processes which are very important annealing to increase the strength remember that if one word only i am to tell increase the strength normalizing sorry to in increase the strength and quenching is done in that annealing is stress relief stress relieving and to increase the machinability and increase the softness so for all these things what you do is annealing spheroidizing is to make material very very you know ductile or soft material soft and ductile so that it's you know uh, this machining could be enhanced tempering on the other hand is to reduce the hardness 
रिड्यूस द इफेक्ट ऑफ नॉर्मलाइजिंग और रिड्यूस हार्डनेस इट इज नॉर्मली डन ऑन मार्टन साइट मटीरियल सो वेन यू डू नॉर्मलाइजिंग मटीरियल बिकम्स वेरी हार्ड एंड देन यू टेम्परेट सो दैट इट्स लिटल हार्डनेस इज रिड्यूस दैट इज अ थिंग सो वट आंसर वी कैन गिव इन करेक्ट इट इज आस्ट इट रिलीव स्ट्रेस यस इम्प्रूव मशीनेबिलिटी यस इम्प्रूव स्ट्रेंथ नो इम्प्रूव सॉफ्टनेस यस दैट इज अनिलिंग इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ओके नेक्स्ट जोमिनी टेस्ट इज यूज फॉर द मेजरमेंट ऑफ वट जोमिनी टेस्ट इज यूज फॉर द मेजरमेंट ऑफ वट किसके लिए होता है जोमिनी टेस्ट एंड द आंसर फॉर दैट इज हार्डनेबिलिटी यू नो वट इज हार्डनेबिलिटी एबिलिटी टू गेट हार्डन ability to get harden that is called hardenability hardness is different it is resistance to scratch this is resistance to scratch or wear is hardness uske liye to alag alag test hote hain wicker test you know rockwell test and all these thing but for hardenability jomini test yaad rakhna so which test which property that is also important for this okay monal metal monal metal bahut important material hota hai nickel and copper yaad rakho aur kon kon se alloys hain material science mein there are some alloys which you need to remember you know like bronze is also alloy monal metal is alloy so uh, different material for different applications so engineering materials and their applications uh, so i think nickel and copper percentage uh, there is a 70% nickel and 30% copper so nickel is 70% and this copper is 30% in monal metal very important alloy let's go next is maximum quenching is provided in which you see freezing water is a very chilled water to so, maximum quenching freezing water mein aayega is ka answer to yahi rahega jo mere ko answer choices bataya tha usme to ye tha but otherwise if there is only mention of water salt water ya brine solution salt water provides best quenching provides best quenching if the comparison is between the air and water etc air water salt water salt water is the best but freezing water then quenching will be maximum in freezing water consumable electrodes you know what is consumable electrodes in which electrodes will give you metal for deposition tungsten inert gas welding mein tungsten is not consumable electrode metal inert gas welding may inert gas will be there but yes there will be metal deposition so in this you use mig welding may you use the consumable electrode there is a continuous supply of electrode and that electrode gets keep on consuming in fact wire electrode use karte hain usme now welding defect and casting defect do not get confused casting defect and welding defects they are two different things rattle cold shut porosity these all are casting defects these are important casting defects don't get confused now spattering spattering is because of blow arc blow phenomena arc blow phenomena which is related to dc supply and i think next question is related to that so molten metal in the uh, i mean small particles of molten metal when they starts getting spattered thrown out on the uh, you know uh, metal piece that is called spattering this occurs because of arc blow so uh, yes arc blow problems occurs in dc welding remember this all whenever there is a current flow you know this is a electrode and current is flowing then there is a magnetic field around this current carrying conductor this is the magnetic field this is the current carrying conductor now this magnetic field will apply magnetic force and that magnetic force will then make the molten metal particles spattering so that spattering is produced okay single point cutting tool nomenclature this is seven seklani sir has very detailed explained it to you seven elements are there in this particular nomenclature of single point cutting tool you know the single point cutting tool you understand that maybe i have made this diagram good for you so any idea where is a rake face yes this is the rake face this is the rake face and then you know what you have shank here you have clearance angle so relief angle 
nose radius all these things seven element are there in the nomenclature of single point cutting tool good question okay continuous chip with built up edge continuous chip with built up edge is formed in ductile materials that is in the ductile materials so can you identify the ductile material here yes aluminium is the ductile material 40 questions 40 minutes you do not have time to think you have to use the concepts proceed forward that is why here it is cold pinning bahut important process hai industries ke andar especially ship industries ke andar cold pinning very small you know uh, spherical balls are thrown with speed and then they apply the compressive force so compressive strength is increased which eventually increase the fatigue strength so improvement of the fatigue resistance through compressive strength that is what cold pinning process is you should know that last question for the day coining is the example of what coining is the example of cold forging process cold rolling hot rolling to hai nahi rolling to hai nahi coining process right so that is the cold forging process hope you understood the questions they were the question based upon memory and similarly i'll be covering this material science and production was covered tomorrow i'm going to cover all 40 questions typically for your uh, coaching shipyard limited exam just to motivate you how you can really score high in this particular exam so uh, see you tomorrow uh, for the live session of this particular class of coaching shipyard 40 question mechanical engineering see you there thank you